Good morning world. Today I am present before you with the poem of Andrew Marvel entitled To His Coy Mistress. Before I begin the podcast, it is advisable that you keep a notebook and a pen so that you can jot down the important points relating to this particular text. It is further advisable to use earplugs for listening to the podcast. So here I begin. Marvel takes the traditional theme of carpe diem or seize the day or gather ye rosebuds while ye may but adds a new dimension to it in the poem to his coy mistress the traditional treatment of the theme amounted to a mere superficial statement marvel thinks of the here and now in the context of its macrocosmic dimensions Similarly the three phased movement of the poem is not emulation of syllogism but the instrument of ratiocination used to authenticate the idea of the poem apparently the poem concerns a lover with his shy beloved arguing out to her the need for present enjoyment this apparent subject is presented dramatically but the macrocosmic implications are also worked out simultaneously and effectively thus the lover and the beloved in their love situation become symbols of man the microcosm vis-a-vis the macrocosm the very beginning of the poem shows mortal consciousness of space and time as the lover starts speaking to the beloved in terms of might have been had we but world enough and time shyness would not be a crime only on the basis of this supposition and suppose they had enough space and time this makes the lover contemplate a fantastic plan of love making during their long love stay or in the context of unbounded time and space the words indicate the lingering consciousness of limited time and space in spite of the supposed contemplation thus irony exposes the hoax of the hyperbole which is to follow the lovers wish to be in each other's company and they are together in this poem but under their contemplated plan they would wander as distant as are the ganges and the humber he would start making love to her barely 10 years before the deluge the period is insignificant in the context of unbounded time but it once again reminds of the limitations of time in the human world and she may not grant love till just before the day of judgment the image of vegetable love reveals that his love would emulate the principles of growth and reproduction of the vegetable soul and thus it would leisurely blossom into a magnitude which is greater than the vastness of the empires thus equipped he would devote himself wholeheartedly to the ceremony of the praise of the beloved her shyness has warranted it he would spend 100 years to praise her eyes and forehead 200 years to adore each breast 30000 years to highlight other parts of her body devoting an age to each of the body part for its admiration and in the last stage of his fantastic ritual he would focus attention on her heart there is irony when he says that the beloved deserves such an elaborate ceremonial treatment and that his performance would be commensurate with her deserts the phantasm of love disappears with the dawn of reality the flux of time in the human world cannot be set aside so the lover hears the chariot of time constantly pushing them against the wall from where they see vast deserts of eternity Marvel combines the auditory and the visual effects to indicate the horror of time her beauty will decay and so her virginity and curious honor when the passage of time leads her to the grave his song will not be echoed in her marble grave and death will turn his sexual urge to nothing the lover mixes human horror of time and death with irony when he says that the grave however secluded is no place for love Marvel thus creates a complex image of reality by combining the effects of time, death, love, instinctual urges and honor. The dawn of reality leads the lover to think of the present involvement 
and the expediency of action. Thus he says that they should act out their love instead of lapsing into fruitless ceremonies while she is beautiful and flushed with passion. This is expedient because they should prey upon the monster of time before the latter gradually crushes them within the jaws. In the heat of the moment, the lovers charged with passion and vigor assume gigantic proportions and thus can devour the monster of time. This in view of the resolve to act urgently within the human limitations of space and time. Thus, the vigor and sweetness of the act of love should be compacted as if into a battle and the living game of love be played. Space and time blind them, but they must override them with a determined effort in order to secure happiness. The lover is not talking of going beyond time and space. He knows that time is an irresistible force, but we must fight it out by doing our utmost within its limits, and only in that way we excel time and space. Thus, we mark that Marvel's poem goes far beyond the cavalier affinities by bringing out the complex reality of our life vis-a-vis -vis the macrocosm. The humor in the poem is subservient to the realization of reality, as is the dramatic structure of the poem. The total effect of the poem is so compelling that you cannot escape its unassailable findings. So this was all about Andrew Marvel's famous poem to his coy mistress. I hope the podcast proves to be of help to each one of you. Please mention your observations and questions in the comment section below. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon for latest updates. Thank you for your valuable time. Here's wishing you a great day ahead.